You are listening to K. Oh, 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 right. Hi, I'm Mike, founder. The following program continues. You are listening to K. Oh, 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 right. Hi, I'm Mike, founder. The following program continues. Bear with me, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I had some people come in and clean my house today, and they managed to screw up my studio computer. I thought I had it all put back together right, but it's still not quite behaving. I think, think being the operative word, that I, that I have it squared away now, so we're about to start officially in just a moment. So hang, hang out, and I would play something if I could, but I'm still trying to get all the parts to behave, so hang on. You are listening to KLRN Radio, where liberty and reason still reign. Hi, I'm Mike, founder of DollarShaveClub.com. What is DollarShaveClub.com? Well, for a dollar a month, we send high-quality razors right to your door. Yeah, a dollar. Are the blades any good? No. Our blades are f***ing great. Each razor has stainless steel blades and aloe vera lubricating strip and a pivot head. It's so gentle a toddler could use it. And do you like spending $20 a month on brand name razors? 19 go to Roger Federer. I'm good at tennis. And do you think your razor needs a vibrating handle, a flashlight, a back scratcher, and 10 blades? Your handsome ass grandfather had one blade and polio. Looking good, pop up! Stop paying for shave tech you don't need. And stop forgetting to buy your blades every month. Alejandro and I are going to ship them right to you. We're not just selling razors. We're also making new jobs. Alejandro, what were you doing last month? Not working. What are you doing now? Working. I'm no Vanderbilt, but this train makes hay. So stop forgetting to buy your blades every month and start deciding where you're going to stack all those dollar bills I'm saving you. We are DollarShaveClub.com, and the party is on. My son was in the Army back during Desert Storm, but even then he wanted an MBA. He looked at a dozen schools, but only one offered the online education and flexibility he needed while he was in a tent in Iraq. Grantham University. Turns out that Grantham's been delivering affordable, relevant college and advanced degrees for over 65 years. Heck, if they can deliver a quality education to a soldier in a tent overseas, think about the flexibility Grantham can offer you so you can earn your degree too. It doesn't matter how complicated or full your life is. If getting a degree is on your bucket list, you'll want to do what my son did. You'll want to call Grantham. Find out how easy it is to get started on your education so you can check that college degree off your bucket list. Call Grantham right now. 800-910-1370. That's 800-910-1370. 
Flexible, affordable, relevant. Call 800-910-1370. Tired of paying outrageous prices for Viagra? Well, we have great news for you. Now you can finally get Viagra at huge discounts. Healthy Man allows you to save up to $500 on Viagra. Why pay U.S. pharmacy prices of $15 per pill or more when you can get Viagra for less than $3 a pill? Call today and get 40 Viagra pills for only $99. This can cost as much as $600 at your local pharmacy. You can't afford not to call us. If you want Viagra at the lowest prices, never pay $15 a pill pharmacy prices again. Get Viagra for less than $3 a pill. Call 1-800-516-7602 today and save up to $500 and get 40 pills for just $99. Healthy Man is fast, easy, and affordable. Operators are waiting at 1-800-516-7602 to take your call right now. Call 1-800-516-7602. That's 1-800-516-7602. 1-800-516-7602. Again, 1-800-516-7602. Attention business owners and independent contractors. This is a money-saving message from Tax Mediation Services. If your business owes $20,000 or more in taxes, we can help you today, right now. Listen, dealing with the IRS is no picnic. It's an intimidating and extremely stressful process, and you don't want to go it alone. Our attorneys know every law, every tax break, and every possible opportunity to help you resolve and reduce your tax debt. And if you owe more than $20,000, you may be at the top of their hit list. So don't take your tax debt lightly because it will not go away on its own. The IRS can seize your bank accounts, your home, and even shut down your business. edition of the America Off the Rails show. Starting late, technical issues, hard drive that keeps playing peekaboo with the main computer, so we just went with a song that I found the other day, by accident, that may actually become the intro. Because <laughs> <laughs> nothing else was working! And I'm doing a show, damn it. I didn't get to do the show last night with Ordy because I was, I was, I, like, fucking, like, 20, like, maybe 45 minutes before showtime. Like, just out of nowhere, just, just migraine from hell. <clears throat> so, we didn't get to do juxtaposition last night, and I was starting to think I wasn't going to be able to do this one tonight because, you know, had <clears throat> people helping clean, and it was taking a lot longer than I had thought it was going to. But, you know, <laughs> what, are, what are you going to do? I mean, you know, anyway. So we're here. We're live. It's Sunday night. It's the America Off the Rail Show. I'm Rick Robinson. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed Al before me. He probably is gonna put, He probably put on a hell of a lot better show than I will. <laughs> Especially because right now I'm frustrated and angry and ready to go to bed. Because nothing's working. I mean, my microphone's working. Studi- studio's working. But none of my sound effects or anything are going to work except for randomly. Because the hard drive keeps saying, hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm not here. Hey, I'm here. Hey, I'm not here. And I don't know why. Because I just rechecked all the connections and everything seems like it's well seated. So I don't know why it's being cranky. Just so I can see if I'm going to throw something at it. Let, let's try something. Yeah, no, they're all still dead. <laughs> yeah, 
yep, they're all dead. <laughs> Unfortunately, since it keeps reconnecting itself, I have to reload everything. So that's why none of them that are currently loaded are still working. Anyway, so enough about that. Anyway, so how is everybody on this fine Sunday night? Um, I had actually, um, until I realized there was a cleaning crew coming, which was a surprise by my roommate, so I can't really be that mad. Um, until I realized there was a cleaning crew coming, I'd actually planned on being in my office today and live streaming the Haley, um, town hall. However, then I decided, cause I was kind of still doing some work from my room, um, that I was going to try to live tweet it. And then it was so boring. There was absolutely nothing to tweet about. And then her camp, her, she posted a tweet and then everything blew up. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who's running her account. I don't know if it's her. I'm kind of thinking it probably has to be her. But so many people had so much fun with the 12 men down, one to go comment. <laughs> I'm just like, whoa, wait, what did she just say? Is that really her running that account? Is that somebody else? Because if it was somebody else, shouldn't have that had to have been approved? And if it was her, did you not realize how this was going to go? I mean, hell, one of my co-hosts, you know him as the Amish guy, Ordnance Packard. And I'm quoting, this is the fastest moving line I've ever seen behind Circle K. <laughs> I'm just saying. I mean, did you not know how this was going to go? And then, <clears throat> oh, that. so yeah, that, that may happen a lot. I'm going to just see if, since I'm not using it for anything anyway, I'm just going to see if I can make it stop by unplugging it. Because I may have to replace that drive now, which is going to annoy me if I do, but... I'll have to figure out if something's happened to the cable or if it's the drive itself. But anyway, so hopefully I can keep that noise from happening randomly just by unplugging it now that I know what the issue, what, where the issue is. Um, and then we'll look at it tomorrow because I don't have anything but the afternoon show tomorrow as far as radio works. So I should have time to try to figure that out. But yeah, so anyway, so yeah, so back to back to Haley's account. Who thought this was a good idea? I mean, don't get me wrong, it's, it's been fun. I think it's already been twitchy. Uh, <laughs> unfortunately, I was not the one able to do that, even though I really, really wanted to, because, again, I was out and locked out of my office for hours today while things were reorganized. Anyway, fun times. So, yeah, for those of you who don't know, um, I am not some rich radio guy. I, I do I do this in what I lovingly call my studio, which is one half of my laundry room and pantry. <laughs> that basically has all my setup right in front of it. Um, and it, I've been toying with the idea because I have a really bit, I have a decent sized master bedroom, um, and it's just me now. So I've actually been toying with rearranging things and moving everything back there. But then that would require having to run a hard line through the house because wireless connection in the back part of the house sucks and it's not very stable for doing things like this regardless which is why I was really happy when I was able to get a hard line ran now I guess I'm probably going to eventually do it again because I do want to start doing like video stuff and news desk kind of things so I think over the next few months I'm going to be reworking my setup but anyway so, yeah, so so that happened today, and you guys might have actually gotten, if, if you missed it, you might have actually gotten to catch it here, but I kind of decided not to do that, and then I was going to, like I said, I was going to live tweet about it, and there was just, like, nothing there. I mean, it was just, it was all just, like, hey, be, 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 be. Donald Trump bad, me good, vote for me. Um, <laughs> I just, I need something else, Nikki. I, I need something else, especially because you're behind everywhere. Your current polling shows that you're losing in your own state. I kind of figured you would have dropped out before that happened. But I guess because the money's still there, you're riding the gravy train. I, I, I've never really known anybody that was just like, yeah, I want to I be embarrassed in my home state. I, 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 never, I never thought that. I, yeah, did, did not expect to see that. But anyway, so here we are. So that happened. Let's see. So before we get into New York, because you know everybody's been talking about it, this isn't this isn't the only place where things have gone sideways, and people apparently may be starting to wake up. Um, now, now again, 
you get what you vote for, folks. So let, let's let's pay attention to that. Group of Seattle business owners plead with the city government to stop repeated thefts. It's a viable career option to be a thief now. <laughs> And unfortunately, they're not wrong. A group of business owners on Ballard Avenue, at Ballard Avenue in Seattle is speaking out, begging for help to anyone who will listen after their businesses have been ravaged by repeated un- unpunished retail thefts. Business owner Matt Humphrey told KOMO-TV uh, that his store has been broken into four times in the last two years and that absolutely nothing has been done about the thefts. So this is Paul Rivera, who I actually think is one of their reporters. Um, I think. I don't know. Um, anyway, here's here's some audio. Joins us from Ballard Avenue. Paul, you spoke to them. No, I guess he's owner, one of the... But we know well, he's not alone. Oh, he's not. There's a jewelry store just down the road that's been broken into even more times. I've been reporting on property crime on this road a couple of years now. Other businesses have been broken into. They feel like a broken record at this point. Their message to city leaders is always the same. Pay attention and do something. I can't keep taking the hits like this. Matt Humphrey, owner of Ballard's Steel Barber and Spa, says it's beyond exhausting fixing up yet another window from another crime caught on camera. And literally within minutes had a trash, they brought their own trash bag and were filling it with uh, beauty products and jackets, which is what we sell to try to pay the rent and pay our tax base here in Seattle. Four break-ins in two years. He says four too many. I've been waiting out failed policy for three years. I've asked you this over and over again. Are you going to stay doing business in Seattle? Paul, I have no choice. I'm so vested here. It's either that or go bankrupt. No, I mean, these two are my favorite cases. Some business owners on this street are a fired up bunch. They need this to work for the city to pay attention. This is like my heart and soul. This is my art. And I feel really strongly about defending it. Down the road at Begin, jewelry store owner MK Byrne has been broken into seven times in two and a half years. Seen here in 2022, she camped up in her business and chased off a burglar. The most recent attempt was in October. Um, from what I understand, it takes a really long time to prosecute anyone who's um, has been caught breaking and entering. It's very rare that they are even caught. And there's another issue. This week, as property crime numbers were reportedly down in the city, Seattle Police Chief Adrian Diaz also acknowledged that the data may be wrong. It's not always an accurate reflection of, of our overall crime. Matt is not surprised. Make this your number one priority. I mean, there's a lot going on in the city, but this small businesses are the backbone of your community, the backbone of your tax base. Help us fix this now. Matt also told me that he sees a direct correlation. All right, so that's the end of the audio clip, and and this is something that I that I think we need to bring back to the forefront because small business is was and probably always will be for as long as we are allowed to own and run small businesses the backbone of the U.S. economy. It seems the Democrats have become the party of big corporations, whether anybody wants to admit it or not. And yes, I know there are just as many Republicans that want the same thing, which is why. We've lovingly started calling the entire group the Uniparty. However, those of you that live in these cities that have voted for these policies, and you know who you are, and now you're having to reap the the, the quote-unquote rewards of those policies, stop voting for this crap. It's not that hard. You have the ability to make course changes at the ballot box all the time, but you don't. Because you've gotten too used to having, well, it, to, to get the things that we need, we need these kind of policies, and we need this, and we need that, and we need this. No, you don't. You just think you do. Ladies and gentlemen, we have hundreds of thousands of people dropping off not only the workforce but the grid every single day. I have seen hundreds of channels on, on uh, YouTube and Rumble and TikTok about people that are going completely off-grid, that they sold everything that they've owned, that they bought an acreage, and now they're homesteading that acreage. And th- that that's just what they're doing. 
because we are now having to learn how to live with less because the government is forcing us to learn to live with less. But the government is only forcing us to learn to live with less because we, and I mean this collectively because I don't, but I know a lot of people that do, vote for stupid shit over and over and over again because it makes them feel good because there's all these feel-good moments tied to some of these policies. Oh, look, we're going to be helping the homeless because we're going to do this. Really? How, how are you helping the homeless in Seattle with some of these policies? Because uh, I have friends who live there, and I was actually, after my divorce, talking about coming up and visiting them. And they're like, no, one of these times we'll just come down to you because you trust me, you don't want to be up here right now. And that was right around the same time of the summer of love and everything else. And all this stuff started breaking out on the news. And I'm like, yeah, maybe I really don't want to be up there right now. And I used to love Seattle. I hated the rain. Don't get me wrong. It rains there way too much. But it's also a very, it, it was a very beautiful place to live. Everything was green all the time. There were, I mean, dude, I remember, I, I remember when I lived there, I was a teenager. And I hated missing the bus because... My mom and my stepdad didn't give a shit if you missed the bus. There was no calling them to come get you. It was you figure out how to get your ass home because you're the one that missed the bus. There was like a three-mile hill that I had to go up every time I missed the bus, which only happened while we lived there like twice because I learned my lesson. Um, because they worked all the time, and they're like, yeah, no, there's nobody to come get you, my dude, so you're just going to have to figure it out. I'm like, okay, cool. Well, I guess I have a five-mile walk home. Uh, anyway, I was young and skinny then. It wasn't so hard. <laughs> uh, but anyway, so, yeah, you know, if if you don't like these policies, and we have lots of people now that are speaking up about how much they don't like these things, start voting to change them. What gives me less hope is we just witnessed the electoral beatdown in the Bronx. And I get it. That district was already feeling pretty pissed off with the Republicans because they felt like they that they felt like they had a sham pushed on them. But you're you're voting for the same guy that tried to screw up your district in the first place out of anger. And th- th- this is not good. This is not good. Now you've got because of all and, and the thing about it is the the anger is, is kind of becoming universal because now you've got Rashida Tlaib telling uh, Biden supporters in the upcoming Michigan primary to basically vote for anybody but Biden. She used a particular word, like unaffiliated or something, vote unaffiliated, um, is I think the word that she used. But she's trying to send a message to the Biden administration that their support for Israel is waning within the party. The thing about it is it's really not. It's just waning with the psychos within the party. But unfortunately, the Republicans have our own brand of psychos, led by the guy who's currently leading in the polls. And, yeah, we're, we're going to get into that tonight because, look, I get it. Donald Trump is probably going to be the nominee. We will know for sure Super Tuesday one way or the other unless there's some sort of a hat trick or something weird happens. He's likely going to run away with it. But here's my issue with Donald Trump. And I said this earlier tonight. DeSantis' supporters were not his enemy. But he made them that way. Haley's supporters were not his enemy. But he made them that way. Because no matter what, he seems to bring out the worst in his base. And the people that are 100% diehard Trump or nothing, he brings out the worst in their base. Now, I won't say that hasn't been also a part of the Haley group and the DeSantis group, because the issue is you have people that were pro-Trump the first two times that are not now, that had that same mindset. So now it's part of, it was part of the DeSantis group, and it was part of the Haley group, and you basically had all these red-on-red crimes happening all over the place, all over social media, telling people, you know, this, that, and the other. But then, you had a, and, and I was gonna, I tried to earmark this but I can't find it now. Um, you had a guy affiliated with the Blaze at an event, I think, for Nikki Haley last night. And just start, it, like, actually works for the Blaze. Just outright calling people names because they were still voicing support for Nikki Haley. 
and not nice names either. And guys, I, I look. I've been called names. I call names. I am not. I am not one of those hand wringing type people. But the one thing that I keep trying to explain to everybody is primaries are supposed to be sparring matches. You know, there are supposed to be limits to a primary because you're all on the same side. Donald Trump never seemed to learn that lesson. And I think part of that is why everybody was so turned off with him in 2020. And I think that's why not more people stood up and said, no, something's not right here. And that's my problem because we now know things have been wrong the entire time. I mean, we know now that the FBI and the CIA colluded to entrap his his, his campaign members to try to force along this whole Russian narrative idea. We know the CIA has changed and altered one of their memorandums from that time that's, that point blank said that Putin actually wanted Hillary to win because he felt that she was more containable and controllable. They changed that memo. We know they did because people are talking about it now. We know that even in 2020, they suppressed the Hunter laptop story. So it, it, to me, it is not too far of a stretch that the 2020 election had issues when you have the, the top dogs in law enforcement colluding to try to ruin somebody. I'm just saying, if they were willing to do that in 16 and it didn't work, imagine what they were, gonna, what they were willing to do in 20 to make sure that it did work. And people have done the legwork. Now they're like, yeah, we've had to extrapolate some of the data, but we've spoken to people and we've done this and we've done that. And then there's another interesting point that I can't ever seem to find much about, that at one point the, 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 the Attorney General of Georgia apparently was reaching out to D.C. with concern because they, they had found evidence of cases of what appeared to be voter fraud. And then, then within a few days, all of that seemed to have gone away. I can't find a paper trail for that anymore. I, I have a co-host who lives in Georgia who hasn't been able to tell me anything about that one way or the other. But I don't know how much she's been willing to look into it either because thanks to Donald Trump, she's had Warnock as her senator for the last six years and counting. I just... <sighs> when, he was, when he was in office, he was like the Leslie Nielsen of presidents. Everything that he touched... Even if it was unintentional, it worked. Now that he's been out of office, he has the reverse Midas touch. Everything that he touches turns to shit. And I don't know if that can be fixed because he's just soured the well so many times. He has. There, there's no way around it at this point. And this is coming from a guy who wanted DeSantis but sees all the crap that they're doing to him, to Trump, and, and, and is still trying to defend him from that crap because even he doesn't deserve what is happening to him right now. But does that mean that he deserves to be president again? I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. I think out of the two choices that we were about to have that are the most viable choices, he's going to be the best option. And I, I, I'm, I'm just going to be completely honest. At this point, I'm hoping he wins. Because then he can't ever try to run again. That, that, that is like the best possible outcome for me. Get Biden out of the White House. Get him back in. Let, let him break all his promises to his people again. So hopefully this movement dies finally once and for all. And then he can't run anymore. If he loses again, he's just going to keep trying to come back because his voice is still going to be, his base is still going to be screaming that he comes back. So th and this is my plea to every DeSantis supporter and every Haley supporter that can hear my voice. And I know I don't have a huge reach, but I'm still making the plea anyway. I know you don't want him. Hell, I didn't want him. But at this point, about the only way to kill this thing is to let it sprout and then die on its own. If it keeps being chopped down, it's just going to keep re-sprouting. 
this will be his do or die moment. He's either going to do everything that he said he was going to do the first time. And then who knows where we go from there. But we'll be in a hell of a lot better shape than we are right now. Or he's going to not do half the things that he said he was going to do. And then he's going to have to answer for that. And it won't matter because at that point he basically just goes off into the sunset. And most likely whoever his VP pick will pro- is will probably be even less popular than Kamala Harris. So there will probably be a primary in 28. Which gives us a good chance to put DeSantis in again. Unless he's smart enough to have gotten out of the game altogether and retired and gone into private sector and made bank, which I certainly hope that he does because I don't feel like our party deserves him anymore. I'm just being honest. From everything I've seen, he seems like a really good guy. He did not deserve the crap that he's been put through. And I know, and everybody that lives in that, well, you gotta understand, Donald Trump is from New York. They're just assholes until they beat you into submission. Well, you know what? I don't respond well to that. I didn't respond well to that when he did it with Ted Cruz. I didn't respond well to that when he's done it with everybody else. And which is why I didn't vote for him in 2016. In 2020, because again, we didn't know how deeply entrenched all this COVID shit was at the time. And how the guy that was basically in charge of cleaning up the whole mess was one of the people that caused the entire mess. So I voted for him in 2020 because he was and st- was one of the best presidents in my lifetime. I'm still, I'm, I'm not, I'm not ever elevating anyone above Reagan unless they do something absolutely amazing. But he's not far off. I mean, I've talked about it before. I worked for, uh, in, uh, this this should this should impress you even more now that I can tell you this. I worked for a university during Trump's presidency. I started working there in 2013. I had a raise within my first 6 months when I passed my first review. I had another raise 2 years later. Then I hadn't. Then I didn't have a raise again until 2017. In the first year that Donald Trump was in office, I got three raises. Three. You know how and why I got three raises? Because the man understands how shit works. He knew how to get businesses to invest in their people again and that was by taking some of the burden off of the businesses and that's what he did he had our economy starting to hum in ways that we hadn't seen before and if not for covid it would have definitely been a landslide hell it looks like from everything that we've been able to find out over the last four years that even with covid it should have been a landslide but apparently there were fingers on scales But this is my problem, and this is why I wanted somebody else to be the top of the ticket this time. Because if they pull off off the steal again, so many people are pissed off at Donald Trump right now, nobody's going to care. We told you he was going to lose. And then hunker down for four more years and hope that we don't die. Ladies and gentlemen, our system is broken. It is, too, it is, in my opinion, corrupted beyond repair. When you have the CIA and the FBI colluding to destroy a candidacy, all because they are not sainted Hillary, that is how broken everything is. And then you have that, those same agencies setting, up, setting up about destroying a sitting president. You want to start talking about treason? The CIA and the FBI were actively suborning the presidency of the United States. Or, I'm sorry, subverting was the word I was looking for. The presidency of the United States. You want to start talking about treason today? Sure, we can talk about it. Why is the Biden administration taking steps to make sure that if they are not the ones in office, that the next president cannot do things to restructure the executive branch? They are already putting up firewalls in the event that they lose. I need you guys to do me a favor. I need you I need you to think about this and picture this in your mind's eye. It is 20 what 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 would that put us at? 2019? 
2019, 2020. It's the very beginning of 2020. We're in, we're starting to get to the point where we know who's going to be the nominee. So all of a sudden, the Trump administration puts a, releases information to the AP that they are putting in firewalls to make sure that the next administration can't undo the work of the Trump camp, the Trump presidency. Now, there were already riots in the streets in 2020, but can you imagine, can you imagine how, how many more there would have been? He, they would have impeached him for a third time. He can't do that. That's un-American. That's treason. The AP just put out the story, what, two, three days ago? I'm pretty sure I'm one of the only people talking about it. They are literally putting plans in place to protect the administrative bureaucracy if Joe Biden is not reelected. So I'm sorry if I have to pick between geriatric dumb and dumber, I'm going with dumb because dumber can't even put a sentence together anymore. And I am not a Trump fan. I have never been a Trump fan. I, I was a fan of Trump's policies because they were working. I cannot stand Trump the man. At least the caricature that he puts on that he puts on when he's in front of a TV or in front of a camera. I cannot stand it. Now I have been told by people that know him that he's a much different person when he's behind the scenes. If that is the case, then I need someone that can that he will actually listen to, since it appears that it is a foregone conclusion that he is going to be the nominee, whoever he is when he's not on camera, that everyone claims to love, he needs to show that side to the American people ASAP. Because if that side exists, they need to see it. Because all they have seen is asshole Trump. And asshole Trump ain't winning friends and influencing people anymore. Asshole Trump is pissing asshole Trump is pissing off the other half of the country that Biden's not pissing off. This is not a good plan. We have the sitting president calling the people that that want, you know, freedom and the Bill of Rights and all those things traitors to democracy. And then you've had this guy pissing off the other half. I mean, if we don't figure something out, the only solution is going to be a national divorce. And those don't ever go well, because I have never seen a national divorce that doesn't involve shots. And I don't mean the good kind. I'm just saying. All right, so we've got that going on, and then we've still got this whole push for Ukraine, right? Which I don't know about you, but I have pretty much had enough with the Ukraine bullshit. I mean, dude, we have given them, last I saw it was like $233 million a day for two years. Why are we not putting any of that money towards our homeless problem? I mean, I'm not a socialist, so please don't, don't misunderstand me. But if we're going to be throwing away money, why are we not putting that money towards our homeless problem? Why, why are we putting that money towards U Ukrainian bureaucracy? And here, I mean, I, I, I thought this was pretty cool. So I, I have some audio I want you guys to, well, it's, it's a video, but I have some audio I still want you guys to hear from the video. One moment, please. Some of y'all really don't get how foreign aid works. So we're going we're gonna to talk about, we're going to talk about foreign aid in Ukraine real quick. Just, just humor me. So here's how foreign aid works, especially in a time of war. Now, remember, you're supposed to have the president declare war through Congress. But since Obama killed more people via drone and dropped more bombs than any other president in the history of the world, that's sort of gone by the wayside. And now we just kill whoever we want everywhere. It's sort of a history thing in America. Anyway, we digress. So we have a bunch of, bunch of these weapons that are in our stockpiles, right? So now these elected bureaucrats with no term limits that are usually over 70 years of age and have stock in Raytheon and Boeing and Northrop Grumman and all these other war agencies, they basically look at a country and go, you need some mutual aid. So without your vote, 
without you saying that you want to devote your tax money to this, these bureaucrats decide that they need these weapons out of our stockpile. So they attach a dollar amount. That dollar amount is extremely inflated. It's even inflated more than what the weapons manufacturers charge us, which is ridiculously inflated. And then they charge that country with that thing. That's where you get the dollar amount. So let's say it's $100 billion, right? We take $100 billion of our own equipment. We ship it to them. We give them a bill. And then instead of giving the bill to the country that we're helping, we give it to the American taxpayer and we say it's for the greater good. But Aaron, how are we going to replenish our stockpiles? Well, we take the bill that we gave the American taxpayer for the weapons that we gave to Ukraine, and then we say, Raytheon, replenish these. This guy worked for Raytheon. That's a secretary of defense. This turbo virgin is stealing your money. Some of y'all really don't get how foreign aid works. So we're going we're gonna to talk, talk about foreign aid in Ukraine. Sorry, we've already talked about foreign aid in Ukraine. I keep trying to tell it to turn the loops off. It's not listening to me. Anyway, so yeah, in case you were wondering... The the guy who you know no, nobody knew who who where he was for a while. Um, guess where he guess who he used to work for. Give you three guesses first who don't count. But yeah, so fun times, right? So and, and and this is this is part of what I've been trying to explain to everybody. We we are being had because we care about other countries. You 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 just heard it explained by somebody else. They overinflate <laughs> what they're giving to these other countries so they can send them a bill who then send it back to them and say, we can't pay this, and then we get it passed on to us so that we, the taxpayer, can start paying to replenish the stockpiles that were, that were given to the other countries. And here's the thing, folks. If, if that's what most of this money is going for, and from my understanding, it's somewhere around 80%, of the Ukrainian funding bill is going back into our military industrial complex, then it needs to be put out that way as a separate bill that says, hey, this is money that is being used to replenish the stockpiles of things that we already that we have already depleted by giving that to these people. It needs to be its own separate thing. And then we need to start having line items of where the rest of this money is actually going. Because I, for one, am kind of tired of footing the bill for Ukrainian pensions when most people in America don't even have pensions anymore. I am tired of helping Ukrainians pay rent when we have people in our own country that can't afford to pay rent right now because we have these giant corporations now and we even have smaller companies that have turned into giant corporations that are just gobbling up distressed property, properties as fast as they can find them. And then making these giant real estate mills where basically they, they just have 10, 20, 30 properties that are filled to the max all the time, charging the max amount for rents and making bank. You know how I know that's a thing? Because somebody tried to get help me get them involved in that about a year ago and I told them that was not something I was interested in. Instead, I'm now spending my time helping a friend build a charity because that is something that I'm interested in because everything and this isn't just this isn't just to pat me on the back this is just something I believe in everything that I do I try to find a way to give back if it's whether it's within my sphere of influence whether it's helping people build charities and I've done this before and haven't talked had don't don't mention names usually things things like that because I don't care, but as as things get bigger, I, th I think I'm going to start because it, it's time for people to start seeing what it is that those of us that actually care about this world are trying to do. And it's not just about this freaking climate change bullshit and everything else that they're trying to push down your throats. Do you realize that I'm about to be 51 years old? And from the age of 10? Every 10 years, there's been something that was going to kill me. Every 10 years of my life, there was something that started being taught about in schools that was going to kill me. First, it was we were going to all freeze to death. Then it was the ozone is going to deplete. And then we're, we're going to all cook because we're not going to be protected from the sun's radiation. Then it was acid rain. Now, you know, you sprinkle in the, the thermonuclear war thing all throughout there. That's actually more than one thing every 10 years that was supposed to have killed us. 
so then the global cooling thing didn't happen. So then it turned into global warming, and within 10 years, all the ice caps were going to be gone. Funny thing is, ice caps are still there. And in a lot of cases, they're thicker than they were before. So because that wasn't working, because the global cooling didn't catch on and it didn't happen, and the global warming didn't catch on and it didn't happen, they're now pushing this whole idea of climate change. And that's been the easiest one for them to push because it's not tied to one extreme or the other. And any time anytime it's hotter than it's supposed to be or any time that it's colder than it's supposed to be, oh my God, it's, cool. it's climate change. No, it's not. Let me give you a hint. It's hot in the summer. Some, hotter, some, some summers are hotter than others. And it's cold in the winter. And some winters are colder than others. And then you have the random things like El Nino and La Nina that really fuck with your weather patterns. And then you have these, the, like, the, the heat waves that's going on in South America right now. Where it's like, oh my god, it's cold, it's, it's climate change. No, it's not. You want to know how I know that all of these global elites don't give two flips about climate change? They all flew into Vegas. Just a couple weeks ago. In private jets. And then they left Vegas. A couple days later. Maybe even a day later. All in private jets. You know the reason they want you concerned about your carbon footprint? Is so they can lock you in a 15 minute city. They don't want you to be able to travel where you want to be able to travel. They don't want you to be able to work where you want to work. They don't want you to be able to live where you want to live. They don't want you to be able to fly for leisure. Because you are the batteries funding their policies. And unless you are constantly plugged in and making them tax revenue, you're of no use to them. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm trying to put this as nicely as I can but we haven't been the land of the free for a very long time and the worst thing about it is is all of our freedoms are almost gone and no one seems to care Ordi and I say this all the time I've said it on several shows our founding fathers went to war over a 3% tax on a breakfast beverage. Now, yes, there was more to it, but that was a straw that broke the camel's back. Because they felt like they were being taxed with no representation. If that's not how you feel today, then I don't know how to wake you up. Because they don't listen to us anymore. Hell, I just had a senator who was widely respected in my state try to push amnesty down our throats as a fix to the border. Nobody here is calling him out for it. Not, not that I've heard. Not that I've seen. He's still being, a, well, I'm the victim. There, there, there's a right-wing political pundit wanted to destroy my career because I was pushing this bill. And there's good things in this bill. There ain't, well, there, there ain't one good thing in this bill. Not one. And if there is, pull it out and run it as a single line item. See if it gets passed or not. Stop with the 2,000-page the monstrosities. Stop with the 400-page monstrosities. Stop with trying to lump all the funding for all of your pet projects into one little bill and then demonizing everybody that doesn't want to vote for it because we are $36 trillion fucking dollars in debt. I didn't say million with an M. I didn't say billion with a B. I said trillion. One trillion dollars is going to be more money than you or I will ever see in our lifetimes. And we are so far afield of, of that right now that it is insane. And these people are just continuing to fire up the printer. The bill is going to come due. People have been trying to sound the alarm about it for a long time. Do you know where most of our money goes to? Social safety nets and social security. That's where most of our money goes. So 
when the money dries up, and it's going to dry up, where do you think the cuts are going to have to go? Some of these people have been paying into this Ponzi scheme that we lovingly call Social Security because it's supposed to be there when you absolutely need it for decades. And they're going to be lucky if they see it. But what nobody talks about is that was how it was designed. The original age for Social Security was already within two years of the maximum lifespan at that time. The reason Nikki Haley, even though she keeps telling you she never said that, wants to increase the retirement age for people below, I believe it's 35, is because their life expectancy is is expected to continue to increase. This was always designed as a way to make you feel safe while they got your money. When in reality, if you had taken a tenth, one tenth of what they had taken from you and put it in a high yield savings account or into a universal life index insurance or a universal index life insurance policy, you could have retired a millionaire. But they don't want you to know that. Because they need you reliant upon them. We need to shatter that reliance. The reason our government was never able to screw with us before in the way that they are now is because we used to prove to them over and over and over again that we didn't need them. We don't anymore. Because we now are looking at the third and fourth generation of people that have been indoctrinated to believe that the government is what's going to fix problems. You know how I know that? Look up the number of people below the age of 35 right now in this country that think socialism is the answer. It might The, the number might surprise you. That's how I know that they're winning the argument. They are convincing people that more government, not less, is how we fix our problems. And I'm sorry, but nothing, and I do mean absolutely nothing, could be further from the truth. That is not how we fix our problems. We fix our problems with less government. We fix our problems by, by teaching our citizenry how to be financially solvent again. We fix our problems by shoring up our borders and making sure that we have control of who comes in and who goes out when we want to. We we fix our problems by removing these cancers in all of our institutions that have taught us that America is evil, that are now operating under the premise that America is evil, and are doing everything they can from both without and within to destroy this once great country. And that is why, even though I can't stand him, even though I really wish it could be somebody else. After Super Tuesday, if he's still the one standing, he's going to get my vote. Because I can't vote for Biden. And as much as I wish the time was now for third party, because I I really, at this point, kind of feel like we should seriously be talking about doing away with the parties that we have now and starting over. I I don't think it would work this time. I want it to, because in a perfect world it would. And we could basically tell both the Democrats and the Republicans to screw off because we're bringing common sense back to everything again. Um, And that would probably be my campaign slogan if I ever decided to run for office. Make common sense great again. All right. Well, we didn't take a break. And so even though we got a late start, you guys have pretty much gotten all the time you would normally have gotten anyway. Um, And I still have technical issues to track down, so I am going to turn in early so I have time to do that tomorrow. Because i got to figure out what's going on with this hard drive, because right now it has almost all of my work property stuff on it. And I need to figure out what i got to do to fix that, because that that could make life fun. All right, so... We're going out the same way we came in, um, and I don't know. You guys in the chat, what do you you think about this song that I happen to have stumbled upon? It's by Tyler Braden. It's called Devil You Know. 
Um, and I am not usually a country guy. I'm really not. Lately, it seems like it's starting to grow on me. And I really, really like this one. So I'm thinking about maybe making it the intro starting soon. Anyway, so we're going out the way we came in. You guys enjoy the rest of your night. Thank you for hanging out with us on a Sunday night. I'll be back tomorrow afternoon doing the Rick Robinson Show, with or without the usual music, because one way or the other we're going to get it done. Um, and then, other than that, you guys know everything else. Look for me on the Loftus Party website, twitchy.com, Misfits Politics, and the Loftus Party podcast should drop sometime Tuesday. And y'all know I'm always here on KLR Radio somewhere doing something. We'll see you guys when we see you. If you're not following along yet, you can find me on those social media platforms at RowdyRick73. Have a great night and God bless. Don't pull the trigger. Try your luck. If you shoot your shot, better pray to God that I don't get my ass back up. Cause you won't get your ass back up. But you ain't met yet, tread real light Dare you to light that fuse Cause I can be a loose king Cross the line, I'll call you blow Promise when push comes to show But you don't want that smoke Better the devil you know than the devil you don't There's a hell on the other side That you ain't met yet, tread real light Dare you to light that fuse Cause I can be a loose kid